In this episode of the Healthy Chit Chat, we're going to explore in detail what exactly diabetes is. This is an introduction. What is diabetes and how is it diagnosed? So before we talk about what diabetes is, we have to talk about what is blood sugar. What is blood sugar? So blood sugar is the same as blood glucose levels, sometimes called plasma glucose or serum glucose levels. These are interchangeable terms and they mean the same thing. And throughout this presentation, we may use these terms interchangeably. Blood sugar does not only come from table sugar. And this is a common misconception among people who say, how did I develop diabetes, doctor? I don't eat hardly any sugar at all. And they're not understanding that there's a difference between what we call table sugar and blood sugar. Blood sugar does not only come from table sugar, candy, and sweet things. Blood sugar actually comes from carbohydrates. So examples of carbohydrates are dairy, including milk and yogurt, fruits, such as whole fruits and fruit juice, grains, which include bread, rice, crackers, and cereal, legumes, such as beans, peas, lentils, and other plant-based proteins, starchy vegetables such as potatoes and corn, sugary sweet snacks. What is diabetes? It is the inability to regulate one's blood sugar levels. Some people believe that diabetes only means high blood sugar levels, but diabetes also affects the patient's ability, their body's ability to regulate low blood sugars as well. Glucose is controlled mainly by two hormones in the body, those two hormones being insulin and glucagon. There are definitely a lot of other hormones that are involved, but these are the two main ones. What is normal? For us to understand what diabetes is, we first have to understand what normal is. If you take a look at this graph, which shows blood sugars over time, it shows my profile of blood sugars. Now, if you look at this profile, what you'll notice is that there are some ups and downs. And this is normal for even an individual that doesn't have diabetes. And I don't happen to have diabetes. So if you look at the numbers here, the lowest number that I've achieved was a 3.9 in the millimoles per liter or the Canadian units or 71 milligrams per deciliter which is the units commonly used in the United States. The highest number that I've achieved over this 24-hour period is 6.3 millimoles per liter meaning the Canadian units and 114 milligrams per deciliter on the American units. For me to achieve that 6.3 glucose or that 114 glucose level, I had to eat a giant plate of pasta, a triple chocolate cake, a slice that was actually made for two people to share, as well as a king-sized Mars bar. And after eating all of those things in a very short period of time, the highest blood sugar that I was able to achieve was 6.3. What this illustrates is what the problem with diabetes is. Some people get a high sugar reading and they look at their numbers and they approach their doctors and they say, well, you know, my sugar was high because I did the following. And that may be true. But the point is that if you don't have diabetes, you can't even achieve these high blood sugar levels. If your insulin, if your pancreas is working correctly and you're producing enough insulin, you shouldn't reach very high sugar levels. So let's talk a little bit about how diabetes is diagnosed. 
there are several criteria that Diabetes Canada has outlined which can help us make a diagnosis of diabetes. The first of these is a fasting blood sugar of greater than or equal to 7 millimoles per liter, which on the American scale would be 126 milligrams per deciliter. Another test that you can do is called an oral glucose tolerance test where we drink a fluid that has precisely 75 grams of glucose mixed in it. And if one's blood sugar level two hours after drinking this 75 grams of glucose goes above or equal to 11.1 millimoles per liter, then one is diagnosed as having diabetes. Further, another way that one can be diagnosed with diabetes is if they have a glycosylated hemoglobin or a hemoglobin A1c of 6.5% or greater. Another criteria is if one's random glucose level is 11.1 .1 or greater. Now, technically, if you have a blood test that is above one of these thresholds, the diagnosis is not conferred until that blood test has been repeated and has shown another number above the threshold. So according to the criteria, if one has a blood test and their levels go above the threshold, then the diagnosis is not conferred until that blood test has been repeated at least one more time, showing the blood test to go above the threshold again. However, if the patient is symptomatic, then at that point the diagnosis has been made and there's no need to further repeat that blood test. Now let's talk a little bit about the criteria in the United States, which is from the American Diabetes Association. According to this criteria, we also need to have two confirmed values of a fasting glucose of greater than 6.9 or 125 milligrams per deciliter, an A1C of 6.5 or greater, or an oral, oral glucose tolerance test of 11.1 .1 or in millimoles per liter or 200 milligrams per deciliter or higher. Now again, these values need to be repeated again on another blood test before one can be conferred a diagnosis of diabetes. If someone has a random glucose of 11.1 .1 or greater, or 200 milligrams per deciliter or greater, and they are symptomatic, then again, there is no necessity to repeat the blood test. This person has diabetes. So hopefully you now have a better understanding of what diabetes is and how diabetes is diagnosed using the American or Canadian criteria. Join us for further episodes where we'll talk about more topics related to diabetes.